Hey there, what is up you guys? I am Jerry and welcome back to the channel, The Chicago Griller. This is a show where I share my favorite tips, tricks, and recipes for the Weber Q. If you think that I could help you out, hit the like button and subscribe. Australia Day is coming up, so once again, I wanna do a special episode for you Aussie viewers out there, as you make up over one third of my subscribers. So last year at this time, I made an Aussie burger with the lot. A fellow YouTuber saw that video and suggested I try making an Aussie steak sangha with the lot. So for this year's Australia Day special, that's what I'm gonna make for you. Come and check it out. The ingredients you need for an Aussie steak sandwich are almost completely the same as what you'd use in an Aussie burger with the lot. Yes, including the pickled beets. However, obviously, we're using a steak today instead of a burger. This is a 1.5 centimeter thick sirloin steak. This is by no means a fancy cut of steak, but we prepare it the same way we do any other by first applying a layer of olive oil to the surface of the steak and then hitting it with some seasonings. I'm using salt and pepper to taste. Pat that salt and pepper in there and of course, as usual, repeat the process on the other side before heading out to the grill. Today, I have my Weber Q2000 preheated to a high heat and as you can see, I've installed a griddle on the right half of the grill. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cook our steak on the grates side of the grill. So lay that sirloin steak you just prepared directly across the grill grates. Shut the lid and let that cook for about three minutes on that first side. After three minutes, the sirloin steak is ready to be flipped. And it's a thin steak, so you see it is cooking pretty quickly. So now that I've given this a turn, I'll shut the lid and let this cook for three more minutes. Three minutes have passed, six minutes of total cooking time on the steak. It's time to take it off the grill and let this rest for a little bit. While that steak is resting, let's prepare the griddle half of my grill. I'll prep that side by spraying a little bit of non-stick spray on the griddle. Take care to not get any of that spray on the open flame, then shut the lid and let the grill come on up back to temperature. Once your grill is hot and ready to cook again, set the gas knob to a medium heat. And if necessary, use your spatula or a paper towel to spread the oil evenly across your griddle. Now we can lay down some additional ingredients, starting with some sliced white onion. These will brown and caramelize up nicely on the griddle and will go really nicely with our steak. But you know what else is great with steak? Bacon, because bacon goes great with everything. Because space is at a premium on a Weber Q griddle, I've cut these bacon strips in half and am laying out four of these bacon strip halves on this griddle. Now I'm gonna push these onion slices as far to the side as I can because I need to make a little bit more room for my fried eggs. So I'll go ahead and crack this first egg here. That's good. It's okay if it touches the onion a little bit. And let's scoot some of the bacon and onions over a little bit more and crack that second egg on the griddle. And whoops, this yolk is running downhill a little bit, but that's okay. I can rescue this. So I'll shut this lid and let all these ingredients cook for about a minute or two. So after a minute or two on the griddle, let's check things out. Okay, so presentation wise, the egg is a little bit messy, but as I said before, I assured you the onions will not stick, but neither does the bacon. So I'll just continue on. First, I'm gonna turn over all my bacon strips. That first side is already cooking up nicely, so time to do the other side. You'll see that the onion is starting to brown up nicely as well, so I'm gonna give them a toss and a turn so that they could caramelize on all sides. Now, I'm going to rescue the second egg 
because I don't want this yolk to cook too quickly. So I'm going to flip it on up onto the whites. The egg above it looks good. So I'll shut the lid and let these cook for another two minutes or so. We're checking the contents of the griddle every two minutes. And when we do that, we're going to give our onions a turn. As you can see, they're getting nice and soft and caramelized. We'll also turn our eggs over as well. When the whites are cooked, they will flip over very easily. Perfect. And once again, continue to give the onions a toss and a stir, as well as turn over all your half strips of bacon. And once everything has been tossed, turned, and or flipped, it's time to shut the lid and let this cook for a final minute or two. With about a minute to go in our cook, let's toast up some bread. Today, I'm using some sourdough bread. Now, at this point in the cook, I think my eggs are just about done, so I'm going to pull them off early. There's no harm, however, in leaving the bacon on or the onions on for just a little bit longer. The onions will soften up a little bit more, and the bacon will just get crispier and crispier. Anyways, once the bread is on for about a minute, and everything else is on for five to six total minutes, it's time to head inside and assemble the steak sandwich. To begin, we have one toasted slice of sourdough bread, and we're gonna squeeze some mayo on top of it. Then with an ordinary table knife, just spread it out evenly on the surface of that bread. Once that's set, it's time to layer out the other ingredients. First up, a bed of lettuce. Follow that up with a couple of tomato slices. And now to us Americans come the wacky part. Some pineapple rings. And then those are followed up with some pickled beets. I'd be skeptical too, but I know from the Aussie burger that pickled beets go perfectly with this. Next up comes the star of the show, which is our grilled sirloin steak. Follow that steak up with some of the good stuff, that bacon. Mmm, grilled bacon. But no, we are not done yet. We got some fried eggs to lay it on top. This sandwich is starting to get really tall and hard to balance, but we still have some caramelized onions and the top bun to add. But before we cap off this sandwich with our last slice of sourdough bread, we need to apply a generous layer of barbecue sauce to this bread. And now to cap off and complete this Aussie steak sandwich. And look at this beast. We need some really large toothpicks, or in my case, some Weber grill skewers to hold this together. So check it out. This is the Aussie steak sangha made on a Weber Q grill. It's a bit of a beast to eat whole, so I actually cut this thing in half. And when you take a peek inside, you'll see that steak is a perfect medium rare. Now here's a tip I learned from the Aussie burger last year. It tastes best if you could get all the ingredients in with one large, messy, delicious bite. And just like last year's Aussie burger with a lot, the sheer number of ingredients in this sandwich seems a little bit absurd, but crazily enough, it all works together really, really well. The acidity of the pineapple and the pickled beets do complement and really help cut through the other ingredients in this steak sandwich. That said, if I had to compare last year's Aussie burger lot to this year's steak sangha, it's a very close call, but I'm gonna give the slight nod to the Aussie burger. The steak sangha was delicious and the steak was perfectly cooked, but it was a little bit tougher to get through than the ground beef burger. I think the higher fat content of the burger also helped increase the taste ever so slightly. However, I don't think you could go wrong with either. And I hope that someday I'll be able to revisit Australia and try both the Aussie burger and an authentic steak sangha. 
Anyways, thank you very much for watching today. If you enjoyed this episode, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe. For all you Aussies out there, don't forget to also leave a comment and let me know how you think I did with this episode and this recipe today. Thanks again for watching. I will see you all again next week. Bye.